where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. <laughs> Alright, good morning, young people. Everybody good? Alright, still saved? Let me put on my priestly garment. There we go. Yeah, my, my robe. Alright, take your Bibles if you would. Turn to Revelation. Is there an S on Revelation? Turn to the book of Revelations. A lot of people call it Revelations. Revelation. 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 Alright. Revelation chapter 11. It's on now. Got wires. Boy, I hope there's not a big old thunderstorm I'll be killed. Sorry, I know where I'm going when I die. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus Christ and thank you for Victory Baptist. Thank you for the opportunity to be in a Bible believing church on this Sunday morning. Lord, I ask you to continue to keep a hedge of protection about your saints. Keep them encouraged. Bless them. Help them. And Lord, help us stay faithful to the end. We love and thank you. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, Revelation chapter 11, starting in verse uh, 1. Well, my poor old Schofield reference Bible is tearing up. That's all right. They say uh, a Bible that, that, that looks like it's been through the whatever indicates that that individual's life hasn't. Amen? So that, that, that the Bible might look all tattered and torn, but, man, the grace of God is going to help you out. Amen? That's a good indication. And it is. It's good to be saved. It's good to be saved. It's good to be able to be able to trust Jesus Christ. Amen. Not only, not only for your eternity, brother, but by, for your daily needs. Amen. And don't ever forget that. I know the, the world tries to keep you on your heels. Amen. And uh, man, it was a sunshiny day today. I don't know if you came out of your house and saw that, but it was beautiful out. Correct. All right. Let's read. Revelation chapter 11 verse 1 the Bible says and there was given me a reed like unto a rod and the angel stood saying rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and then that worship therein verse 2 but the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 in two months amen that's your that's your Gentile nations we won't get into that today amen but hey is the united states a gentile nation yep. all right verse three and i will give power unto my two witnesses uh and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score day clothed in sackcloth amen i wonder what uh uh joel steen uh what kind of suit he wears you think it's made out of made out of sackcloth i doubt it all right uh, there are two olive trees and two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth. Why, that's power. Interesting, right? That's, mm -hmm. And devour their enemies. Devour their enemies. If any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. That's an interesting... Uh, I'll tell you this. If, when, if and when God's hand is on your life, it doesn't matter who's against you, brother. Uh, you're going to make it through. And as long as God is in what you're doing, brother, you're going to be all right. Just all keep right. moving. Amen. And, uh, you know, you'll see that there'll be a transition with these two witnesses here. And when that day comes, there's a, there's a, there's a blessed ending. Amen. They do live happily ever after. And I will remind you, as a Bible believer who has trusted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, you are destined to live happily ever after amen so turn that frown upside down christian all right let's see uh where we have verse six and these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over water to turn them unto blood or to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will so those two uh have been debated for time but based on those characteristics amen what you have here is elijah moses or moja moses and elijah amen coming back during the tribulation time frame all right let's see and uh verse seven and when they shall have finished their testimony right 
uh, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So, so uh, real quick, hold ye at, but go to Daniel chapter 7. Hold ye at, but go to Daniel chapter 7. And so you don't, so don't get confused about the time and, or the day and age that you live in. You're living in the day and age of the coming Antichrist, brother. Amen. And as a Bible-believing pastor, it's not my role for you to, to tell you rather that you should spend and waste a lot of time trying to figure out who he is and whatnot because when he comes, brother, you won't be here, amen? And so when he starts unleashing and, and you know, all these crazy things start having happening rather you won't be here you're not appointed on the wrath amen uh but that spirit uh, the bible says that now worketh in the children of disobedient it's pretty prevalent amen in that uh no one really cares to hear much about your savior brother and there's this sense that man things are kind of breaking apart they're falling away, man, and the saints are wearing out. But that all comes with the, with the times, amen. Look at Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, speaking of the Antichrist. He says in verse 25, And he shall speak great words, amen, against the Most High. And that's what you're seeing. That's what you're seeing now. Are the police officers ordained by the powers that be? Or are, are, are they ordained by God? Because they are the powers that be in Romans chapter 13. I saw a video the other day where these two girls walked up to a police car with their phone and started talking all sorts of trash to these cops, man. And, and I could never be a cop because there'd be an incident report uh, after that. But that's what you're getting. You're getting these individuals that are running your mouth, brother, and there's no fear, man. There's no fear uh, towards the authority anymore, and that's where you're getting all the level of rebellion. Uh, and so you're getting that here, verse 25, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints, amen, of the Most High. You see that? Wear them out. Uh, and think the change times and laws. All right, that's what you're getting now. That's where they're pulling all your statutes down, changing laws. And all right, so that's a precursor of what's coming. What you're seeing unfolding is a precursor, amen, of what's, what's, what's coming our way. I want you to focus there, though, on the, on the part where he says, and shall wear out the saints, amen, and you're getting that. And you're getting that, 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 that uh, it's very difficult to stay consistent and stay faithful in the ministry, brother. Uh, keep your priorities straight. Why? There's just a spirit there, and you're feeling tired and fatigued and uh, part of the rat race that we have to endure in what we call life. And it's tough, brother, but I'm here to encourage you and try to anyway. And remind you the fact that Jesus still saves, amen. And and He's got a plan, and you just got to stay faithful to the plan. All right, go back to Revelation chapter eleven. Look at verse eight. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which is spiritually, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. You know that's Jerusalem. Amen. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, amen. But I'll tell you in the eyes of God right now, and what's headed that way, brother. Uh, it's called Sodom and Egypt. It's worldly. And interesting, he says Sodom because Israel is a leading supporter of sodomy in your world, brother. It's one of your leading supporters. And you wouldn't get that, right? You would think like, wow, you know, because we do pray for the peace of Jerusalem, amen, and I'll curse them to curse thee, and I'll bless them to bless thee. And we support Israel. And thank God our president supports Israel. But again, man, that, that Jew, sadly... Uh, you know, he's a Christ rejecter. The average Jew cares nothing for your Savior. He, right. he calls your Savior a bastard. A bastard is a man, with, a, a kid without a, without a father, amen. All right, uh, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, amen. So, you know, people talk about, well, you want to go to Israel? I mean, you know what? I'll do that during the uh, millennial reign. I'll go that route, amen? Uh, right now, it's referred to as Sodom and Egypt, so I'm not sure what you get out. You get a lot of Catholic propaganda and whatnot. Maybe get a rocket fired on you. I don't know. All right, verse 9. And they, uh, and they are the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies there three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Now, how are they going to be able to see those bodies lying there? 
Yeah, well, they got the technology now, brother. You're on, you know, you got kids talking on their wrists like Dick Tracy was when we were kids. You know, when Dick Tracy used to fly around in the garbage can? And we remember Star Trek, and they used to flip that thing, and they were like, wow, what a day that was. And then you passed that flip phone deal. And, you know, Star Trek, you know, the bridge, they had the flat screen. Yeah, we were like, wow, super science field, all the future, whatever. Although we're still not flying. We don't have flying cars. We had thought by now we'd have the flying cars. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. Here's your Christmas, amen. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry. Merry Christmas. And you say, well, Jesus is the reason for the season. He's ne not that season. He's not. That's Anyway. Uh, and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And, and that's how they take the gospel of Jesus Christ. Instead of like, hey, man, let's get all that, the word of God into the schools and let's get it, man, out to wherever we can in the United States of America. Your, your United States of America, my country, amen, you ban the word of God, brother, and uh, you, you, it isn't getting any better, uh, amen. Uh, sadly, the Christians are attacking the word of God and have been since the beginning of the Laodicean church age. And then again, we wonder why all these times and, and laws are changing and whatnot. Well, you know, God will give you what you want. Did you know that? If you want him, he'll give you more of himself. If you want to know more about God, God will bless you with that. However, if you want more of yourself, he'll allow you. In uh, the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 1, talks about eating the fruit of their own, own way. Say, man. And they shall dwell, they, they dwell upon the earth, uh, shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Man, we're excited that they're gone. Initially, the world's going to be very excited the fact that all you narrow-minded bigot Christians, you know, jamming your religion down people's throat. I don't know about you. Have you ever pulled people out of their car talking to them when you talk to them about Jesus Christ? Have you ever set a, a, a police car on fire when you were telling people the gospel? Hey, man, you ever throw bricks through whatever? You steal a bunch of shoes when you did that? No. We never did that, brother. So that's the world. Don't, don't let them confuse you. And, and the Bible says very clearly that by their fruit you should know them. So all the rhetoric and everything, and that's what the Antichrist does. He talks a lot. He talks a big game, right? So, so don't worry about that. Stay in church. Stay in your book. Amen. All right, let's get to the proof text. Though. That's verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Amen. And as a Christian, our desire is to want to be filled, right, with the spirit. All right. So the, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And here we go. And they stood, amen, upon their feet. And, and so I'm going to bring a message, amen, to you about making that stand, right? So behind me, I drew this picture of this young man. Of course, he's always a young man. It's always good to be young at heart, right? They say the new, the new 53 or, 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 or 33 is the new 53, and I don't know, my, my legs all busted up. Anyway, so, so as a Christian, right, uh, you'll see there, now we'll take this a little bit out of context, obviously, because uh, this is in the tribulation. Doctrinally speaking, this is not the church age. However, the sentiment or the spirit behind standing up, brother, is, is all about... It's all about that, amen. And, and I'll tell you what happens. When, when the world sees the Christian, when the Christian church has the power of God, amen, on them, amen, you see the ending of that verse 11? Great fear fell upon them which saw them. And so, and so the, the power that you're looking for as a Christian, amen, you're not going to find through video games, amen, or, or Netflix or whatnot. It comes from, from God Almighty. It's the Holy Spirit of God. And that's where the power comes from, amen, in your Christianity. And brother, when, when, when they see the fact, when they see you've been with Jesus Christ in this world, they'll notice that there's a difference, right, in your life. Because they'll see the way you handle things is completely different than the way they handle things, right? And so that's why I encourage you, brother, as a Christian, aren't you going to go through trials and tribulations? What's that noise? They attacking? The, the mob outside? All right. Well, they won't know that. They'll just hear that. And we'll say, well, you know, the mob attacked us here in South Florida. And... Bro, I ain't got attacked by nothing but, but mosquitoes so far. I mean, I, you know, so I know they, 
Anyway, well, they stood upon their feet, right? And now, now, now immediately after that, right, right, right as it looked hopeless, amen, you know, everybody was against them, the Spirit of God came into these two witnesses. And as a Christian, are you to do the work of an evangelist? Yes, so you're supposed to be, so really what you are, you're a Jehovah Witness. But you don't want to be confused, amen, with the cold up the road. So we call ourselves Baptists, amen. So we don't, you know, get confused with those individuals right there. But you are a witness, amen. Now, directly after the fact, right, when, when these guys stand to defeat for this one final stand, look at verse 12 and, and tell me if you can't see what, what happens after that. And so I say this is the time, amen, to stand. This time when... When it looks like the world's coming apart, amen, uh, you know, I, I keep seeing it, well, Barnett, we're going to a cashless society. I've always known that because I read my Bible, amen. Well, the United Nations is gaining power. I've, I've known that too because I know what, what, the, what the determination in Zephyriah, 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 what? Zephyriah, Zephyriah, is God Almighty's desire or determination is to gather the nation. And so again, you're you want to make we we here right victory bat. We want to make this last stand, amen. This last push because in verse twelve, amen, the Bible says, and they, the witnesses, heard a great voice. You 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 know who the great voice is, brother, in your life. It ain't Walter Cronkite, amen. It ain't it ain't <laughs> it. It ain't Donald Trump, brother. And again, here we go. And I'm, you know, I, I've lost some friends since I've been so radical against your quote unquote. I saw what's being posted now from Christians. And I won't say the word stupid because I ain't Christian. But I'll say fool or dummy, Dodo Bird. You have Dodo Bird Bible believers now posting. The, the saving of America is now coming from, from bikers, from motorcycle gangs. And so now with the music in the background, they have all these Hell's Angel, biker, outlaw, whatever on, I don't know what highway, but there's 200 of them. And the music's in the background. Of course, you're not going to play him with that. You're going to play some, I don't know, Van Halen or Black, I don't know what you could, that ain't no him. And you got Christians now posting that, you know, the bikers are coming after Antifa. I mean, I don't know how, how carnal you need to get, brother, and, and what world, fantasy world here. Did you just read what, what went on with the two witnesses? And that was Moses and Elijah, brother. Was God aware of what Moses and Elijah were going through? And when God was ready, he gave them the power. And then when God felt to fit... They stopped, brother. And the Antichrist and the devils, and they overget they, but you know what they did? They, they did rally. And then I see these dumb things, you dumb Christians. You Christians, man, you misguided young people. You're posting stuff, man, with all these bikers clashing with Antifa, saying that we should side with them. And them bikers are cussing out and using words, brother, and all sorts of vulgar language and whatnot. Why do you feel that that's important? If you want a battle, brother, you got one. It's called Christianity. If you got a fight, you have one, brother. It's called the good fight of faith. Amen? And so at these last days, while everybody's quitting and going back to the world, and we at Victory Baptist Church, you know, the, the rallying cry, amen, is to make one final stand. And the Bible says they stood upon their feet. And then they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their enemy saw them, man. Brother, talk about the last laugh, brother. Everything that you're doing, the, the things that you're having to deal with as a Christian, and if you're living right, you're going to get opposition in this world, man. And I get it, but you know the key to that is, man, let God Almighty fill you with the Holy Spirit of God. And let Him give you the power that it takes to be able to make it towards the next day, to, through, the next, through, through to the next day. You know, it's tough. I get it. Man, there's all sorts of crazy things, but you won't do yourself any service, man, by staying out of the book, amen, or getting caught up in the quote-unquote current events and everything that's going on. I, I, I haven't been attacked. You? I haven't been threatened. 
Have you? I mean, the only time anybody threatens me or whatever, it's usually myself, brother. It's just the, the conflict, right? The spirit lusts against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit Paul talks about. And the problem that I have, brother, it's usually with this old nature of mine, wanting to do what it wants to do when it wants to do it. Amen? In an age where there's a great falling away, that's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. You don't have to turn there. We at Victory Baptist Church, amen, by the grace of God, right? So Paul says, I thank my God on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. Paul thinks and sees, rather, is thankful in seeing what the, what the grace of God does in the life of the believer, brother. And you know what he does? He thanks God for you because of what he sees the grace of God is able to do, right, in the life of those believers. You know what the temptation is? It's to quit, man. Enough's enough. I can't make it. You know, all this stuff going on. And, brother, the sad part about that is what you'll see is, man, it really wasn't as bad as you made it out to be. Amen? And we've been going over these Christian kind of history, the persecution, and that was Brother John Huss. Now, you're going to see him one day, and you're going to see William Tyndall one day, man. You're going to see the Apostle Paul one day, and you're going to see Moses and Elijah one day. Can I ask you a question? Man, what you, don't you want to have something that you can relate to when you talk to these saints in heaven, brother? Don't you want to say that when everything was going to the left, we at Victory Baptist, or you as that individual Christian man, you stood, and you were able to stand upon your feet, and man, when the whole world was against your Savior, and they were against, Christians hate that book, the King James Bible, brother, it's the Christians that attack, most people don't have any idea, they just in general say, well, you know, the Bible, but then interesting, on TV, they always say the Bible, the these and the thous, you ever, that's an, that's, that unsaved world knows there's something special about that book, because every time they, they reference a Bible, to any detail, it's always that old, you know, the these, and then when they're mocking you, they always use an English accent, amen, when they do, oh, 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 thou shalt not slap thy brother, in the face when he gets on your nerve and he'd say that's Hollywood well they're referencing your King James Bible brother that's how that works man it's the grace of God so in the age with the great falling away we at Victory Baptist Church amen want to be an exception in the church of the Laodiceans brother don't, don't you want to be that one that out of, out of everything that's going on in America that you know what he fell she fell but I didn't fall Lord I, I, I trusted you, amen, during these last D-A-Z-E, brother, these last days, amen. When others fall, we stand. When others step back, we step forward, man. We step up to the plate. When others fall asleep, we awake on the righteousness, amen. Yeah. They stood upon their feet. I draw this picture, man, of this young man, and he's... You can't see it from where you're at. He's, he's standing on the rock, man. Who's the rock? Who's the foundation? It's Jesus Christ, amen? So he gave everything you need to have as far as your level of assurance, brother. And it's good to be saved and recognize the fact that if you fall, you're falling on the foundation. And then you rise back up, man. You live to fight, amen? Another day. Martin Luther says, I cannot and will not recant anything. Well, I like that. I cannot and will not. Wouldn't that be great if that was the spirit of the Laodiceans? I cannot and will not do that. I cannot and will not quit. Amen? I cannot and will not let my Savior down. Well, I love that. That's the fighting spirit, brother. And why can't we be, why can't we be the exception? When everybody else is bringing the rock and roll in, why can't we be the ones to say we're good with the old time hymns, brother? Right. Sister, why can't we say when, when everybody's rebelling against their husbands and, and throwing everything under the bus and spitting in the, in the, in the, in the, in the sound doctrine of that King James Bible, you're going to say I'm going to be an obedient wife, amen. I'm going to obey my parents as a young person, amen. As a husband, I'm going to step up. And I'm going to lead the house like a man. Be a man, brother. Be a man. I cannot and will not recant anything. For to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. Here I stand. 
I can do no other. So God help me. Amen. You know what? As your pastor, here I stand. Man, I'm good, brother. I thank God out of everything that's going on in America, everything that's going on in this world, everything that's going on in church history, brother, I have a place to stand. You have Christians in the world, brother, they don't have churches, amen? You do. You got Christians around the world, man, they don't have a place to, to meet, they don't have a place to praise God, they don't have a place to worship, they don't have a place where they can preach the word of God, but we do. You do, amen? And the door is open, brother. We got a little thing on the side. We jam that in there so you are free to come. And I thank God I have a place to stand. And I told you when we first got here, I'm going to stand with you, brother, sister, at Victory Baptist Church. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Thomas Jefferson, there you go, you patriots. It is air alone which needs the support of government. Truth can stand by itself. Amen? That's a politician, brother. I'll read it again. It's air alone which needs the support of the government, but truth, amen, can stand by itself. Can I ask you a question, man? You, you young people, you, you, you gonna be able to stand? You, can you stand by yourself? You adults? When everybody at the workspace, when everybody in the family is looking at you like you fell off the back of a fruit truck, man, you able to stand? Does Jesus Christ have the power? Can he give it to you? Can you be the one man to go that extra step for Jesus Christ when everybody else is going to the left? Can you go to the right? Can you stand in the middle? Hey, thank God, man. Aren't you glad you have a place to stand? You can stand with us. If you're out there on Facebook land for whatever reason, man, you are where you are, you're doing what you can, man, stand with us. Come here. If you need a place to go, brother, we'll, we'll embrace you, man. We will support you as a church family, brother. And you know what our prayer is? Our prayer is, God, man, help us be that difference in the lives of these people in South Florida. Eh? If there's somebody out there, Lord, in the community that will benefit from this ministry, Lord, help us be that church. Man, we got an open door, brother. We've got an open door. If you're looking for the truth, man, we at Victory Baptist Church want to be that one. When everybody else is falling and everybody else is closing down, brother, and when they're coming in, when Antifa or whoever, they're coming in and crashing the churches or whatever, they haven't crashed this church. You better take advantage of the fact. Why? Because that could change tomorrow. Right now, God Almighty has kept a hedge of protection about Victory Baptist Church, brother, and the only thing that's keeping Christians away are Christians. The only thing that's keeping Christians away from most of the Christianity in the United States of America certainly isn't the Republicans or the Democrats or the Sodomites. It's just simply the Christians. You sing a song called Stand Up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. It goes like this. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, and it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory his army shall he lead, till every foe is vanquished in Christ his Lord indeed. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. His, the arm, rather, of flesh, CNN, Fox News, The Blaze, the arm of flesh, you, will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer, where duty calls. See, it used to be that Christians understood what the responsibility was, what their duties were, and you know what was said? Duties never conflict. Where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. The strife will not be long. This day, the noise of battle, the next, the victor song. You know what he said, man, this day the noise of battle, so all the problems that are going on at the house, all the problems that are going on with your finance, all the problems that are going on, man, just within yourself. I understand there's a struggle within yourself at that fight, that good fight of faith, brother, is to get you to the position that whatever's right to do, you do. So right now, that's that battle going on, brother. I got to get up. I got to be where I'm supposed to be. Right? Understanding what time it is. The next, that's the victory song, brother. 
when it's all said and done, you hear your Savior, well done, thy good and faithful servant. To those who vanquish evil, a crown of life shall be. They with the King of glory shall reign eternally. You know what they knew back then in these old time huh? they, these old time hymns? Brother, they knew that in order for you to reign with Jesus Christ, it, it came with a cost, brother. And it was all these, these, these hymns that nobody wants to sing anymore because, you know, it's old-fashioned old and we got to appeal to what? To the flesh, right? To little kids that are running your houses and stuff. Amen? Little kids, it used to be a time in the United States of America where kids were seen and not heard. That's the way it should have been, brother. But now you got little kids that are screaming at cops and throwing things, brother. You know, every last one of them, you come up to a cop, brother, you know what that should mean? That means you're getting that. They used to have them nightstick will bust you upside your head, but amen, but you're living in a different world. I just watched. Isn't it against the law to spray paint stuff that doesn't belong to you? Yeah. But where is all the authority? How, what is that spirit that's telling all those powers to be just to stand by? Does God see all that? God's letting that happen, brother. Why is that? Could it possibly be that when, when, when he looks down, amen, at the United States of America with all the blessings that he has given this country, you sing songs about that. God bless America, right? You sing songs about that, brother. Amber waves of grain and purple mum majesty or something like that, amen. And, you, and then Christians all over America, brother, just sitting by the wayside, right? You know what they've done? They've sat down. They sat there during the crucifixion, that, that Bible says, uh, they, and there they, and, and sitting there they watched him. And that's all Christians are doing, brother. They're just watching their country go down the toilet. And you know what they're doing? As they're sitting on the sideline, they're just pointing their finger about everybody else. Look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. Oh, we need bikers to change America. We need a revolution to change America. We need an AR-15 to change America, brother. You're in trouble, man. But thank God, when everybody else is falling by the wayside, we don't have to be that crew to fall by the wayside. How about we be the exception, amen? When everybody else is saying, let's get closer to the world, how about we at Victory Baptist say, we're tired of the world, amen? And we're going to stand up for Jesus Christ. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Man, it's good to be saved, brother. Uh, and I'm going to keep preaching. And, and you know, you, 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 you hear all sorts of preaching. And, and you either do one of two things with it, brother. You either accept it, embrace it, and do something about it. Amen. Or you sit there and blink. And you know what they do? They just wag their heads. You ever read that Bible, man? When they hear that, they either being tormented because they're full of devils. Or they just sit there and wag their head, brother. They just shake their head. That's what Christians are doing. There are, so, there are Christians in America, brother, and again, I'm not real sure if they're devil-possessed or oppressed or whatever else. But if you're a Bible believer and we bring up Jesus Christ and that bothers you, the only time I read about anybody being bothered about Jesus Christ in the gospel is when they're devil-possessed. Amen? So I don't know, if, but if you're, you're upset and you can't have a conversation about the second coming of Jesus Christ, and you can't have and get excited about Jesus coming again, you got problems, brother. And I don't know if they're devils or whatnot, you're just flat out carnal, and brother, you despising your birthright, I don't know, but that's happening in America today. How about when everybody else sits down, we stand? How about that? Is that good? All right. Well, well you better purpose in your heart like Daniel did, because brother, those days are coming if they're not already here. You're going to be able to face the, the, the lion's den, brother. You're going to be able to face the fiery furnace. Or you're going to be like so many, brother, and just go with the flow. Nah, that's all right, Pastor. I love to go, man. I got things to do. No, that's all right, Pastor, man. We, 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 you know, I don't want to look like a fanatic on the street when we go out there and preach. Okay. Remember what Jesus Christ looked like when he was presented to the world? He had no clothes on. He was on a cross, brother. And he never concerned himself about his physical condition. You know what Jesus Christ did up to his last dying breath? He won souls, brother. Amen. Okay, don't, don't forget that. He won a soul. Before he said it was finished, he won a soul. Amen. All right, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Finally, finally, my brethren, talking plural, Victory Baptist, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. If it was on us, I get it, man. I'm weak, bro. I, I tried to refurbish my deck the other day in my back, and all the foundation, I had a good message though, the foundation was just all just rotted out, man, it's old wood, best stuff. You could take the, the, the wood and squeeze it with your hand, and it comes apart, amen. 
And I do what I could, brother, to try to, you know, I went around and found some old two by fours and whatever by fours, and I talked to the maintenance guy. He told me in Spanish what it sounded like, go ahead and take as much as you want, and I did. So he didn't call the police, so it must have been what he said. And man, I just sat there and pulled everything apart and all the rusty nails and prayed that one didn't go through my foot or whatever, and I kind of, the best I could, I bet it's, it's, it's about 70% right now. Well, it was like 40%, but now it's 70%, amen? And, but I tell you, man, it took me two days to recover just to doing that in my own strength. Amen. So aren't you glad, brother, in verse 10, that when it comes to doing whatever God wants you to do, it comes with your stand. It won't be in your, your strength, brother. It won't be in your because you can't. And God knows that. And God told Paul to tell you to remind you in verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. You're like, all right. No, he's not talking about. And in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, amen, against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, or rather withstand, in the evil day. Brother, these days are getting progressively evil, man. You got Christians that are loathing and hating, and they're the despisers of those that are good. Amen. Christians giving you hard times. And you know what the expectation is? To be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, stand, man. And you know what's so good about being part of a Bible believing church? You got other people that'll stand with you, man. You have ladies in here that'll stand with you. You got young people, amen. They'll stand with you. You got old men like. Whoever's old in here, man, they'll stand with you. Okay. Ain't me either, brother. Amen. Ain't me, brother Mike. I got you. I don't know who. Whoever the old people are, man, the gray beards, you know, wherever they are, whoever they are, man, we'll stand with you. But you got to make a commitment. You got to want to be part of what we're doing, amen. And God Almighty will give us the power to be able to do that. How do you know? Verse 10. And when you're feeling worn out, I understand that, brother. I'm with you. I feel that way at times. Man, there are times, man, you know, I, I get bad news, too. We all get bad news, but we keep moving. We keep going, brother. Before the war is won, there are many battles, brother. And that day is coming. We sing about it. Stand up for Jesus. All right, verse 13. Wherefore, take you on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Verse 14. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So I drew this young man on this foundation, brother, that's your Savior, Jesus Christ. And he's got all sorts of temptations, the doubt, the fear, the hurt, the loss, amen, the covetousness that goes on in America. God knows what you're going through. Had he not come down when, and was manifest in the flesh, brother, I bet you'd have an argument. I bet you could say that God really doesn't understand what you were going through. He wouldn't understand what it's like to lose something that you love. But he came down, didn't he? And he took it, didn't he? He was tempted in all like manner as you were. The difference was, brother, he did it without, without sin. All right, so we sing, uh, we sing this song... Uh, Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear to own his cause or blush to speak his name? Brother, I've seen Christians, man, they, they, you stand up and tell people about Jesus Christ, they get all nervous, man, and you just ruin their day. Well, we didn't come here for that. <laughs> well, man, I mean, you know, whose day is it? The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made, amen? And so if he gave you a day to have, and, and he puts it on you to go tell somebody about Jesus Christ, well, you're, well we, you know, we don't do that on Wednesday, so yeah, yeah, we only do that on Sunday, and, and we only do it when people come to our church. That table attracts, brother, and now when you come to church, and that's great, take some. The table attracts that we have there, brother, are primarily designed to be able to be put in your pocket. And when you head out there to the mission field, because you do the work of an evangelist, amen, uh, you go out there and pass those, pass those tracks out. And shall I fear to own his name or blush to speak his name or to own his cause or blush to speak his name? Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease? That's the latest to see him, brother. 
Man, if the AC's out, we ain't going. If it's raining out, we can't make it, brother. If they're thinking, I'm not just, I'm not feeling it, brother. We, we ain't going to be there. All right, well, these guys knew. Man, this was, I think this was written according to what I got by Isaac Watts, 1721, brother. 1721, so that's a long time ago, right? But can that be you? Can you have the same spirit that Isaac Watts had when he penned that song, brother? Can't you be that one? They can stand up for Jesus Christ, regardless of all the temptation that goes on, and God giving you the power to be able to make it through yet another day. Can't you be that guy? I want to be that pastor. I want to be that husband. I want to be that father. I want to be that sought object for somebody, because you know what the world needs today? They need Christians, brother. They don't need any more Antifa or no more sodomite causes or whatnot, and that's what they're getting. That Old Testament talks about the bride going back into her closet. Brother, you know who was in the closet? All the Sodomites used to be in the closet. How'd they get out? What happened to the walls, brother? What happened to the stand? Well, who, 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 who left their post, brother? Why are the families in the condition that they're in today? Why are they celebrating perversion in the United States of America? In God we trust. Okay. While others fought to win the prize and sailed through bloody seas, are there no foes for me to face? Must I not stem the flood? Is this vile world a friend to grace? Can I answer that for you? This vile world? Is this vile world a friend to grace? Can I answer that for you? No, it is not. You want to know how you know that? Ask them. Hey, can I ask you? Can I tell you, rather, can I tell you about Jesus Christ? And look at their face, brother. Nah, there are rules against that. No, that's, no, 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 man, you can't bring that in here. To help me on the God, sure, I must fight if I would reign. You know what they knew back then? Man, there's a reign to have, brother. There's an opportunity uh, uh, at the second coming of Jesus Christ and what's called the millennial reign for Christians to, to, to come and serve Jesus Christ here on planet Earth, man. And those Christians back then knew the importance of finishing the race, finishing the course, fighting the good fight of faith because they wanted to be part of that reign, brother. So much so that they incorporated that narrative into their song service, amen. To remind you, brother, you expect to do what in heaven? Because we're like, well, I mean, I'm going to just get all the benefits that anybody else has ever had because God is love. Well, God also writes, by the way. And if you're familiar with any policy and procedure that you ever had to fall up underneath or any kind of work that you did, brother, you understood there's a corporate. Okay, so there's a corporate responsibility and cor corporate accountability. Right. Oh, we're going to make sure you get your raise. I get it. And your promotion, correct? Because you want to be a regional guy. Well, not if you ain't doing right, you know. And so the same saying goes too with your Savior, brother. You love him? Act like it, man. Yeah. Increase my courage. That's a prayer. Increase my courage, Lord. You know what a good prayer for you would be today? Lord, yes. And can you please increase my courage? Why? Man, I'm weak. I'm weak and carnal, man. And that's me. I said I am. I'm weak and carnal as your pastor. Man, I need prayer, brother. I need God Almighty. Thank you. I need to be able to stand, but I can't do it without his power. I can't do it without his might. Man, I can't do it without your prayers, brother. Same, same goes for you. And so, man, when people are just missing and they're doing their own thing, man, and look, I know everybody's got to work, brother. You better pray hard about all that work because I know what work does. It takes, it takes you from, from where you need to be, brother. And you know what's going to happen when you see Jesus Christ? You ain't got nothing to show. You got nothing to show for your Christianity. And you know, what, you know what's going on with time, right? It's flying, brother. Man, it's already, we're, we're either our year's up, or this is our year, or it's coming. Okay, a year today, just like that. And guess what? The next year's come, and we're already in our, and we just keep on keeping on. The things you need to do for Jesus Christ, brother, you know what you keep doing? You keep thinking, well, I just get real right tomorrow. And you've been saying you'll get real right tomorrow for the last three, four years, brother. And you've been going through the motions. You better pray for our kids, man, because I'm not seeing it. 
If they're there, if you got some next generation coming up that's serving Jesus Christ and you can't wait because they're there, you show me who, 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 where are they? Because the only teenagers and kids that we have in the church here today are the ones that still live at the house. Where are the ones that are coming in? Where are the 20 something, man? Where are the 30 something? Where are they? Because I'm in my 50s. My wife's 20, but I mean, that's different. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. And you know what Paul says? Be strong, man. It takes strength, brother. It takes strength, man, to do right in your marriage. It takes strength to do right at the church. It takes strength to represent Jesus Christ. Did you know that? It takes strength to be a good parent, brother. And you know what this nation needs? Good parents. Parents that aren't afraid to tell their kids, I don't know, here's a good one, no. Or you can't. And you got kids all over the place, brother. And again, that's your generation. Where are they at? Where are they at, man? Because what happens is they're all checked out. And they're in church, and they have a Bible, and they may sing a song, and they got a tie or whatever. Brother, but you, you know your kids. What are they doing? Are they ever asking you anything about the Bible? Because if not, that would be a red flag. And if nobody has no interest in coming down and joining you to read the Word of God, or there's no interest to pray with you as a dad or a mom, you know, I, you, I guess maybe the world that you live in, you think that that's a normal deal. Not if they're expected to stand in the day of adversity, it's not, brother. Not if you think that they're going to be able to take the mantle. And they're not going to rally anybody around anything other than video games. That's really all they got. And what you find in churches today all over America, brother, it's either a bunch of real, uh, 40 and up and little kids. But you don't see that all the, the, the whatever. And, and the, all right, because I know there'll be some... There'll be some people watching. Oh, our churches. Okay, what kind of music they got? Ah, see, there's your little your compromise. So we're going to bring David Bowie into your church. No, no, thank you. We won't do that. Brother, and if you think that those Christians that are going on there now, are they able to cross land? Christians are getting pregnant. Christian girls. Before they're married. What are you going to do with that? What's the matter? That was good. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, be partaker of the heavenly calling. We're talking about standing. And your Bible, you know what you know it's constantly emphasizing, man? Take that next step, man. Stand up for something. Because if you don't stand up for something, you're going to fall for everything, brother. And you know what Christians are doing today? They're all falling for everything. They're falling for the political okie doke. And man, I saw them bikers out there that, that I guess we're supposed to trust in. They're using, I, I, I couldn't play, I couldn't play what they said here. And they're threatening the Antifa guy. And again, busting somebody upside the head. I get the feeling I've been there. I mean, I, I, I get it, man. I've seen the Antifa guy getting hit by the cars and stuff, man. And you know, you reap what you sow. I mean, I don't really have a whole lot of sympathy for that. But you know what, the guy flipping over the car besides an ambulance, you know what he needs, right? He needs Jesus Christ, man. And it's so much easier to pander to the flesh. It's so much easier to, to say a cuss word than it is a praise in America today, brother. You know it's more acceptable. You know they'll accept GD more than they'll ever accept, oh, praise God. Yes, sir. That's what you're living in. Are you going to be able to stand, brother? Or are you just going to kind of go with every, go with the flow, right? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1 says, Wherefore, holy brother, and partakers of, of the heavenly calling, Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. Consider them. That's why we preach. To remind you, these individuals that you're going to stand before, brother, you're going to be in heaven one day. You can't change that. And glory to God for that. You're eternal secure in the beloved. Jesus Christ saves, and you're saved. But man, you know what you're not considering? Everybody that went on before you. The Martin Luther's, right? These John Huss that you read in your bulletin, brother, and what he never quit. What happens if I mean? What happens if it was us that was responsible to spark the the uh, the uh, what do you call it the um, Reformation? Who who who's gonna who's gonna spark what? <laughs> well, we, we ain't got time for that. These birds are losing their life for the gospel. You ain't losing your life for any nothing. 
Nobody's threatening you to come to church. Ain't no threat, nobody threatening you if you, they might yell at you at worst, right? Maybe they throw something at you. I mean, I mean but my goodness, man. Hmm. You know what the word ecclesia, ecclesia rather, militants means. Ecclesia militants. It means the church militant. Ecclesia militants. What it means is, uh, or rather what it consists of, the Christians on earth who struggle as soldiers for Jesus Christ against sin and the devil and the rulers of this world in darkness and against the spirits of wickedness in high places. That's the church militant. That's how you're supposed to handle sin, like a soldier. Amen. And man, we're just surrendering to everything. We're surrendering our time to the enemy. We're, res- we're surrendering our lives to the enemy, to the world. We're surrendering our fashion to the world, amen. And can't, can't understand why why the young boys don't respect us. You don't understand that, brother? Sister? You don't understand how the world works and the church is doing that? Why? They're not standing anymore. They don't want to stand. At Victory Baptist Church, man, are you saved? Are you going to heaven? Is God your father? Will God supply all your needs? There's a little list here. I'm going to help you. Because sometimes you're like, it's not what you know it's who you know man and you do do want to get a chance to read up on the benefits are you saved are you going to heaven is your is your, is god your father will, will god supply all your needs does he care for you are you precious in his sight in his sight will he ever leave you or forsake you are you more than conquerors in him has the glory departed from your life? I hope not. Has God written Ichabod on your forehead? Has God written Ichabod on our church? I'm going to tell you now, he did. You know how you know that? We're still here. You know what Paul says? He says uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, 30, and why stand we in jeopardy every hour? That's a good question. If you got all those blessings of being a Christian, brother, and you got the grace of God, and God says, I can give you the power, and Paul says, and why stand we in jeopardy every hour? Why? You don't need to. You have every example in the world, and if you can't remember anybody but this one, one person, remember this. Jesus Christ, brother. He never quit. He never left you. He never forsook you, brother. He's with you to the very end. Matter of fact, brother, that gospel, man, is an anchor to your soul. That eternal life that you have, nobody can take it away from you, brother. And you know, at the end of the day, you know what you're going to want to be able to do? You're going to want to be able to stand like this young man and say, you know what? Out of everything that we ever had to experience in this life in America, and we say, yeah, it's tough. It can be tough. Well, brother, is it tougher than the grace of God? And I'm going to tell you, no, it ain't. And no matter what it is you're going through, no matter what temptation, man, that you think is D1 to knock you out, brother, the only reason at the end of the day that you allowed yourself to get knocked out is because that's the path you chose to go, brother. And sad that this whole church experience thing is coming to an end. And let me tell you about the church in the end, brother. It don't end well. Well, man, why don't you be like Moses and Elijah? And no matter what's going on, trust the power of God that he has for you. And if they knock you, the whole spirit of Antichrist is coming to destroy you and shut everything down. Don't fall for that. Stand, brother. Stand. And you know what they did? They stood to their feet, man. You know, in Victory Baptist Church, you know what we're going to do? To the end, brother. Man, be like us. That's fine. They'll all get it. Fine. Fall off another round. Stand up. Preach. It'll be worth it all. Father, thank you so much for Jesus Christ. Thank you for being good to us, Lord. You surely are. Thank you for being good to Victory Baptist Church. Thank you for keeping a hedge of protection about us. 
but we don't have to worry about these mobs, at least so far. Nobody's stormed our church, Lord. Nobody's uh, thrown stuff and threatened us that I know of. And we know that's because of the grace of God and the power that you've given us. And Lord, we plead the blood and we thank you for everything you bless us with. Pray for this week coming up. Pray you work in the hearts of your saints. Keep them encouraged, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.